institutions. They're now trying to say, hey, we've got a really clever idea for the cost of living crisis. Right. Eat cereal for dinner. But for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did fail her. Oh, it was, supposed to was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. And I'm Alex Phillips. We're with you for the next half hour to soar over stories and weave through the headlines at a blistering pace like collie dogs at a Crufts agility competition. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. Great one. Uh, a little out of date, though. Crufts was two weeks ago, or was it? The I just weekend? had dogs on the mind this morning. I know. We did a lot about dogs yesterday. Yeah, didn't we? we did, actually. Uh, right, lots to get through, as always. Let's race through it like uh, greyhounds. Another oh, canine. Good, nice. Another canine. Should we just make it a dog themed day for right. no reason? Uh, Ma arbitrarily. Yeah. Michael Gove, uh, what is he at the moment? Leveling up secretary? What kind of secretary is he at the moment? You never can tell. Communities. Really. Communities, whatever the hell that means. He, he goes around cabinet positions uh, faster than a Grand they Prix F1 them driver. They as well, don't they? Yeah. Anyway, uh, whatever the hell secretary he is at the moment, under his purview, apparently uh, will be, uh, is he will announce at 11 a.m. the definition of extremism. Uh, this is in uh, a bid to uh, stop some of these uh, hate marches that happened at the weekend, etc., etc., and the rising fear that somehow or other extremist groups are ideologically uh, but, taking this country prisoner, to be honest with you. What is absolutely stunning about this is this report is going to start looking into certain organisations who receive government funding. Uh, I'm sorry, why is my taxpayer's money paying for a particular religious organisation? I can pay my church voluntarily. That is my choice. I don't see why I'm paying these community groups. I can tell you why. Community I leaders. I tell you why. The government's useless, but carry uh, useless. on. Useless. <laughs> so, you know, should we be taxpayer funding these things? And should they be having, you know, very important roles, like advising the police on what the definition of Islamophobia is. I say no and no. There's a separation yeah. between church and state and actually far too many of these organisations have had far too big a stranglehold. So this is now going to look at whether they're nice or not and whether they should have these positions, positions they shouldn't have had in the first place. But when we're talking about the fact that taxpayers' money has funded some of them, first of all, that is wrong. We also need to look at forensically who else is funding some of these because I'll tell you what, there's plenty of groups in this country receiving money from terrorist organisations like Hamas. Let's talk about that, shall we? I mean, this is just going to be a word soup. <clears throat> Most of these organisations are going to be very litigious. It's going to stoke up a big row all about Islamophobia again, and nothing will change. Yeah, uh, we should stress it's not just about Muslims. Azara Mohammed, the head of the Muslim Council of Britain, told the BBC uh, that uh, the definition would lead to the unfair targeting of Muslim communities. Now, I've got this, I've got this suspicion that when uh, this definition uh, becomes enshrined in law, as it were, uh, that it's going to cause more problems than it will solve because the lawyers will be down on it like a ton of bricks and they'll say, well, actually, you're calling my client an extremist, but if you look at the wording of the <coughs> government's definition, he is not or she is not. You see what I mean? It's going to be... It's going to turn extremism into right. a kind of debating society. Mm. And also, I mean, that point one is if it uh, incites violence, hatred or intolerance. Well, that that's a great thing to have up there. No one should be doing that. Point two goes along the lines of something like this. If your organisation contradicts British values such as open democracy and such as individual freedoms, then you're also in trouble. But, you know, a lot of conservative religions do exactly just that, particularly... Islam, conservative Islam, doesn't really believe in democracy because Allah is the highest power. And when it comes to individual freedoms, I don't know, men and women can't mix yeah. together in mosques, can they? Yeah. It's going to take us into a maze of, a, you know, a, just a, a nightmare, frankly. I don't know what it's going it to do. Uh, I mean, if something does need to be done. 
Yeah, but, but uh, I think uh, the government coming up with some kind of cack-handed, badly worded definition of extremism in order to single out the people on those hate marches who are actually breaking the law, it's going to be a minefield. For example, uh, as you said earlier, Alex, uh, it will apply uh, but not criminalise groups that pr promote an ideology based on violence, hatred, and so, intolerance. So they, will, they will turn it's... round. They will turn round and say, "This isn't intolerance. This is not hatred." Mm. Well, the government will say, "Well, it is. It is hatred, and it'll just be right. a mess." So, if it, if it applies to but doesn't criminalise, what, yeah. what does it do? Yeah. What does it do? I'm applying to. What What does that even mean? I mean, I think what we need to do is really think very strongly about the sort of things mm. that France is putting in place. And why would you not forensically monitoring some organisations in this country, which are getting away with doing all sorts of. Why would you things? not criminalise uh, a group that uh, mm -hmm. had an ideology based on violence? Why would you not criminalise? That's not against the law, then, is it? Great, great definition. There may be trouble ahead, folks. We're going to move on. Uh, now, Diane Abbott, that uh, race row about that bloke no one's heard of, Frank Hester, uh, the Labour Party having great fun with this. Uh, and they, uh, to be honest with you, uh, although I think it's a Westminster bubble uh, oh, really obsession, is. a silly little debate in the House of Commons, it, it has steered the Tories into trouble. Uh, will Rishi pay back Frank Hester's £10 million. Pounds. He <laughs> says no so far, but he may change his mind. But the point was, yesterday, they had this debate about it, and uh, Diane Abbott, the woman at the centre of the <laughs> song... <laughs> the debate's all about. Thought, yeah, thought, you might have thought that the speaker, Lindsay Hoyle, uh, would have called her to speak. And she certainly tried. She stood up 46 times and was ignored by the speaker. He said, oh, we ran out of time. I'm afraid, given his track record in the past, here's what I think. I think Hoyle worried that Diane Abbott would accuse the Labour Party of racism as well as the Tory party. Mm, and indeed, much and us. indeed, in an article in The Independent, she says Labour have treated her in a racist way. So once again, uh, Hoyle, I think, is in trouble. This is a clear case to me of a Labour MP, former Labour MP, now Speaker, uh, being biased again, uh, biased towards Labour and not letting uh, this kind of thorn in their side, Diane Abbott, speak, because, of course, she is still suspended from the Parliamentary Labour Party uh, for, for anti-Semitism, anti for being comments. a racist. Yeah. I mean, you know, bless <laughs> Diane Abbott. Uh, she, pretty no. much could see, she pretty much could see racism anywhere, couldn't she, frankly? This cup of tea to her is probably racist in some way uh, because of its colonial I've heritage. Black coffee in it. Well, that is the deeply bar, racist. That is, you know, that is just trolling. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you think you're doing? I'm going to qualify you as an extremist under Michael Gove's new word soup. Um, but, but I just think it's, <laughs> to be honest, this is sort of of like women, women everywhere, isn't it? People always have conversations, even, you know, can I just say, in this here building, the amount of times I've sat on a panel and there's two men discussing, oh, yeah, well, you know, the menopause and uh, yeah, uh, men getting into single-sex spaces and you're sitting there as a woman going, yeah, I, I might have a view on this. Yeah, I, but, um, I, I, you know, feel, I always feel a bit, you know, I, 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 I try to wind my neck in about things like abortion, and etc. Because this, this, you, you know, much more about this sort of thing than I do, and therefore I get your point. Uh, now, uh, now, we of said course, yesterday. We, let's talk about, uh, you know, uh, while Keir Starmer is getting all high and mighty about Frank Hester, who is he? Don't know. Uh, uh, the, the big green donor, uh, Dale Vince. Uh, who is a big supporter of Labour, etc. Uh, he ha he's in trouble because uh, he says, I think one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist, right? That's how it works. Uh, basically, he is supporting Hamas there. Mm. Uh, let's have a look at Dale in action. Talking to Times Radio. I think one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist, right? That's how it works. So that is not the Labour position, interestingly. That they're not, not saying that. They're saying the opposite oh, no. of that. Yeah, I understand. But you're happy to... This is pragmatism But this, this is my view. This is your this, view. This is how I feel. So that Labour yeah. donor thinks uh, and <clears throat> states on, on a major radio station uh, that Hamas are fit freedom fighters, as uh, um, Sig Abel, that was the interviewer, I do believe, uh, as he pointed out, well, that's not Labour's position. So, you know, stop shouting about the Tories' problems with dodgy donors and start mm. dealing with your I own I said gear. yesterday that this is going to end up a zero-sum game because if we go back and financially analyse and look at the historic tweets of any money that any political parties ever got, whether it's Lib Dems, Labour, Conservative, Greens, SNP, Reform, Plaid Cymru, if you want to go back and do offence archaeology into all of your donors and the provenance of your money, be my guest. We will have no political system anymore. There will be no political 
political parties because no one will have a penny to spend on a campaign. Yeah, uh, I, I, it's just an utter nonsense. Yeah. And it, the logic of it doesn't make sense. Like I said yesterday, this guy made offensive remarks, very offensive remarks, five years ago. So money he gave last year has to come back to him. Yeah. It just it, None of this actually follows any sort of logic. Politics never does. And like you said yesterday, Mrs Miggins in Milton Keynes couldn't give two hoots. I like Mrs Miggins in Milton Keynes. She's my fave. Uh, what, what's she my, likes what's you my, too. One, She's my, your biggest fan. My, my, Hi, Mrs my one is uh, Mavis in Hartlepool. I always think about Mavis in Hartlepool. Uh, if, she's not, if she doesn't get the story, I don't want to do it. Right, uh, <laughs> let's talk about uh, wokery. Let's uh, talk it's about all women's over... things. Woke... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she... <laughs> Be quiet, Alex. I've got something to say here. No, uh, this is new woke uh, NHS guidance for the staff, actually. It's a 17-page booklet uh, which was published online by NHS. NHS England uh, saying that not everyone who experiences uh, the menopause is a woman. Uh, they go on to say that uh, non-binary uh, and uh, um, uh, trans people, etc., also uh, um, uh, suffer from the menopause. Uh, and uh, women's groups uh, rose up in fury and said, wait a second, this is a female problem. And uh, guess what? Uh, NHS uh, England took their booklet down from their website. I just don't understand why any of this even needs to be printed. For a start, you know, there are plenty of people out there who could probably tell the difference between a former woman who's living a life as a man and otherwise. And then if you go into a hospital, well, it all comes down to the bits you're born with and the bits and bobs inside you, doesn't it? So all this idea of, you know, oh, you've got to be careful in case you offend someone, it's just a pointless exercise. But what worries me about this is this is all about going, oh, to women with menopause in the workplace. I haven't gone through it yet. I'm sure it's pretty horrific. Once a month, my life is pretty horrific. Most women can sympathise with that one. But I don't think we need people going around patting us on, a, on our heads like we're some sort of victim. Yeah. I mean, this is just life. And actually, do you know what I'd like to point out? You know, I'd like, you'd like your little factoids for me. I do, I do, you? yeah. So very few species in the world go through the menopause. In fact, in terms of mammals, it's That's basically... Right. Hold on. Whales. Whales elephants and us. some sort of monkey and us. Yeah. And in all of those, right, this is the, the interesting fact, in all of those, why do they go through the menopause? Because the women have to stop getting pregnant because they run the show. They oh. lead the tribes with elephants. They have to care for the men, the, the female orcas, for the whole of the men's lives until the women then die. And it's because women should be running everything, which is why we haven't got time to keep having children. That's that the, is the biological the function of menopause. Ever said. No, 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 no. That's actually uh, true. Well, my problem with you lot is why don't you ever buy the drinks? Right, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> That's why I take you to the cider fun. house, mate. That was a joke. It's not, it's not really, because I take you really. to my favourite cider pub and just sort of stand there and, you know, have a conversation with someone next. No, you buy the <laughs> drinks, you buy the drinks, uh, and I do too, but I, uh, I hasten to stress. Uh, now, Pe Peta, Peter, I think is the right pr uh, pronunciation. I actually like Peter as a group, but they are, they can be rather silly. They're obviously a big an animal welfare, anti-cruelty <laughs> organisation, and uh, they have now said, and I, I think they're quite clever, they know how to get headlines. Oh, yeah, now yeah, said, yeah. You know when a photographer says, say cheese, so you get a good big grin, they say, you shouldn't say that because cheese is a dairy product, and Dairy products are harmful to animals. Uh, instead, they suggest that we say bees, uh, or my p personal favourite, uh, nutritional yeast. Well, no, Can my, you imagine a photographer what saying I like to them, about All right, this. a happy couple, you just got married. Everybody in the picture, everybody now, nutritional yeast. It's ridiculous. No, but actually, I think you made a good point about them snatching headlines, because in the video they've put online, you've got a lot of families posing with their children for photos, instead saying, baby slaughtered for veal and calf cow separation and repeated and forced impregnation. And I actually think, you'll be surprised with, I, I actually quite like this campaign because I am a, a big celebrant of cows, having lived in India, and I care for cows deeply. Well, and I actually in India, think you don't that care about cows. Well, no, it kind of, you know, it adds to cow caring. They get in I the way of the say. traffic. In they it, do, you? they do. Get but you kind of, you start cow. thinking them a bit like pets. <laughs> and actually, I think it's an important conversation to be had in terms of industrial farming and cows that are reared indoors and fed rubbish and treated terribly and the baby ships off in crates. And no, I actually, yeah. when it comes to things like this, I do believe in animal rights. And I think that we've got to pull our sleeves up now. We're out of the EU and can have high animal welfare standards. Uh, and Peter, are, uh, they're no fools. They know what this 
it adds up to it. They know the media will be all over this. So like, you lunatics, they don't really think photographers are going to say, say nutritional it's yeast. Good campaign. Uh, uh, yeah, they're no I'd fools. They're, and, and, they, and they stand up for good causes. I, I, you know, it's where my tough guy uh, exterior <laughs> d disintegrates uh, because uh, I'm a bit of an animal lover. I'm a, I'm a real wokey when it oh, comes yeah. to animals. I often mistake you for Jean-Claude Van Damme so every morning. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> you mistake me for Jean-Claude Van Damme. I am not from Belgium and never would be. Right, uh, <laughs> Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have broken their silence. So the New York Post, uh, page six gossip column, very famous gossip column, uh, they uh, published a story a couple of days ago saying uh, it was from friends of Harry and Meghan, always be suspicious of that, saying that... Uh, that Kate uh, Middleton's uh, Photoshop scandal saga would never have happened to them uh, because Meghan's very photo savvy. But if it did happen to them, they would be annihilated. Well, as I said yesterday, Kate has hardly got off scot-free. Far from it. Uh, anyway, Harry and Meghan say that uh, that did not that had nothing to do with us. That did not come well, from friends of us. That is not our view. I mean, it's not really breaking their silence because it's just a written statement that says very little, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, they've got had plenty of opportunities over the past months and years to actually put out statements on things like, you know, we the Sussexes wish Kate a speedy recovery. We yeah. didn't hear that, did we? Yeah, but friend, uh, when it's friends, be careful. But they, they were very nice to Page Six. They said, well, with all due respect to the excellent people at Page Six, this was <laughs> not from us. So uh, uh, no uh, end of a friendship there. But uh, John Oliver, who is a British comedian, who is like a superstar uh, in America. He used to do, uh, the, he does a show called The Last Week Tonight, big show, uh, late night superstar on US TV. Uh, he's caused our outrage uh, by saying uh, there is a non, I don't know what this means, he said there is a non-zero chance that Kate died 18 months ago. Uh, this is obviously... Uh, fuel on the fire of the conspiracy theories which are going through the roof in America. Uh, you will not believe some of the theories about what's you going on. You should see what Kate. the Spanish media are up to. The yeah. Spanish media yeah. on steroids over yeah. this. It's absolutely wacky. But, you know, people are thinking it's kind of insensitive and kind of dark to say that actually, yeah, we haven't seen her, so she, maybe she's not actually still uh, extant on this planet. But do you know what? I mean, this, if you're in the public eye, people are going to make jokes. This is humour. You might find it a bit tasteless. I think we say far worse about Joe Biden on a regular basis. It's just life, isn't it? I like Kate tremendously and I really hope she's okay, but I don't think you need to get your knickers in a twist about someone sort of making a joke about what's really my going feeling on with about Kate. Cover. My feeling about Kate, she's a member of a family that I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm quite interested in the royal family. Uh, but, uh, you know, they say, oh, she's photoshopped. I don't think she did photoshop this picture. I don't think this picture ever existed. I think it's a composite. There's a non-zero chance that that there, photo There's a non -zero Never existed. And I think they have got themselves in a real mess. The photograph, in even if she did Photoshop it, is essentially a lie. The question is, is ever since then, have they been pouring lies upon lies? Uh, they've certainly got themselves in a real mess. Mm. And uh, the people who work at Kensington Palace for William and Kate, I guess, should be fired because they seem the to be that, very useless. Yeah, the fact that we've had no video. They could have easily put to bed all of the conspiracy theories, couldn't they, if Kate had released some sort of short video or an address. But yeah. Nothing's happening, yeah. so it just sort of keeps building. All right, uh, Harry, Harry and sad. William, uh, the Diana, Diana Memorial event, which they both turned up to a couple of years ago to open it uh, once a year. Uh, they revisit and remember their mother. Uh, they are going to appear together, but they're not going to appear together they're because really William will be there and Harry will send in a, uh, a, a sort of Zoom speech and therefore they will not... Right. And therefore, because the one thing people always said is that these two brothers, no matter how much they hate each other, would always come together to celebrate their beloved mother, but they're not doing it this time. How utterly sad that this is all to celebrate the legacy of Princess Diana, their mother. And as you said, William's going to present awards to 20 recipients. Then once he's left the building, Harry will appear via Zoom call. I can't think of anything yeah. less that yeah. Diana would want in her legacy yes, than her two point. boys yeah. not even they being well able to slogan. remotely yeah. be yeah. in the same place. They might as well put a big time. slogan above the ceremony saying, Not We're, my legacy. Harry and William hate each other. It's right. Just uh, awful. Uh, very quickly, uh, Jeremy Hunt the other day in his budget, ah, in his useless budget speech, uh, he said that uh, national insurance was particularly unfair and uh, he wanted to scrap it. 
uh, he's uh, he's now saying, oh, well, yeah, it is particularly unfair. We do want to scrap it, but it'll take decades. Oh, great. Let's have a look at uh, Mr Hunt. Even if the Office for Tax Simplification were uh, beavering away coming up with suggestions, in the end it would need a political decision by a Chancellor to accept those decisions. And ultimately, you know, if we um, abolish the double tax on work, which is what the Conservative Party wants to do over time, it won't happen in one Parliament, but it's a long-term ambition. If we do that, that will be uh, the biggest tax simplification in our lifetime. This is the absolute worst form of gaslighting and breadcrumbing that has now become the staple of the Conservative PR machine. Let's do a speech saying, we're going to deliver something that everyone goes, wow, that'd be amazing. You've got to vote Tory to get that, but you don't get it. Yeah. And then you don't get it. And 15 years later, you don't get it. Yeah. And then it turns out 50 years later, you don't get it. It's just called lying, yeah, Jeremy. That yeah. shouldn't have been in your speech at all, should it? He said it's particularly unfair, the national insurance tax, because it is an extra tax, a double tax, if you like, English income tax and national insurance tax. Uh, he says, particularly unfair, and now he's saying, yeah, that particularly unfair tax, you got it for decades. Uh, saying, great, thanks, Jess. It's like me saying it's my long-term ambition to present this show in a bikini, yeah. but I will never do it. Yeah, uh, I promise. mean, just no, stop I, it. I, 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 no, um, <laughs> I said you promised then. That was very ungallant of me. It would be nice if you did it in a bikini. I stop looking down there! I, I'm not, well, just, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> the producer right. saying, let's move on. <laughs> uh, right, uh, the, the here we go. We we're talking about assisted dying. Was it yesterday, yesterday wasn't it? With uh, James Whale, of course, our mm. colleague, who's uh, got and terminal Esther cancer, daughter. and uh, Esther Rance's daughter, the lovely uh, Rebecca Wilcox, uh, saying that it's about time uh, uh, that assisted dying was legalised and the ridiculous syndrome where people, husbands, wives, go with their loved ones to Switzerland. In this case, uh, a guy called Dan Tuckley, only 46, uh, was suffering from terrible cancer. He decided to end his life. He went with his wife, Sarah. Uh, they went to Switzerland, £20,000 uh, to the assisted dying clinic in Switzerland, where he listened to My Way in his final moments. That uh, makes you cry, actually, doesn't it? And uh, 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 guess what? So Sarah then comes home. Guess what? The police come round. Uh, to interview her. This has got to stop. This what is I think, crazy. The, what I think is absolutely mad is the Derbyshire police come and knock on her door and uh, to tell her that they are not pursuing an investigation. Yeah. Don't, what, bother. don't even bother knocking the door then. Don't bother. Why would you go knock some sort of go, uh, hello, hello, hello? Uh, we are not investigating you. Yeah, well, well uh, she said that she felt it made her feel like a criminal. Yeah, right? I mean, so it's just. Please don't go around to these people. All they're doing is accompanying their loved ones uh, on a very, very emotional last yeah, trip. Yeah, you can so take don't that one go out around to the intro and go Don't and make solve things a worse for them, eh? Uh, now, Joe Biden, uh, we know that uh, his uh, cognitive abilities <laughs> are under a cloud, and there's some questions about them. Anyway, Anyway, a guy called Robert Herr, who was the special counsel for the American Justice Department, who interviewed the president about uh, his alleged crime of taking classified documents out of Washington to his home in uh, Delaware. Uh, Robert Herr, uh, they, they've now, the transcript's been released, and it uh, emerges that in two days of interviews, uh, the president said, uh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't remember... I can't recall, and I have no goddamn idea, more than 100 times. And that's why the American Justice Department decided, let's not pursue this case, because this old guy will not be able to hack yeah. it. He can't remember anything. It's, Unbelievable. It's absolutely mad, because you juxtapose this uh, alongside the other news today, that Donald Trump is due up in court to talk about the classified documents found in his house, and he's being treated like some sort of axe murderer over this, whereas sleepy, senile fossil is like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's because I was redecorating the garage. I mean, it's just, it's one rule for him and another rule for Donald Trump. If one person has classified documents in his house, it is bad. And so if the other one has classified documents in his house, it is bad. Or it's not bad. Make up your mind. Maybe but what Donald, you can't do... Donald should just pretend that he's senile because obviously it gets you off the hook. Yeah, well, you know what I mean? Uh, now, uh, White House also, uh, there's a bullying and toxicity row. This is, doesn't actually involve Joe Biden, but apparently his staff, Jill Biden, 
uh, for a start, is accused of making inappropriate comments, etc., etc., etc. An aide of Jill Biden. Uh, um, got so that's another aspect, the casting a cloud over oh, Biden's dear. administration. Uh, now, uh, also in America, the House of Representatives have passed a bill that uh, looks like it could lead to a nationwide ban on TikTok. Interesting. Now, I don't, what's interesting about this is what website, they're basically the saying is uh, ByteDance, who's the Chinese company that own yeah. uh, most of TikTok, have to give up their shares uh, in, or, in order them to circumvent this ban. So is it about competition and Silicon Valley, or is this about national security yeah. and the sort of way that it's being regulated and algorithms yeah, yeah, yeah. are being used to, I don't know, brainwash kids well, and TikTok's propaganda? TikTok's banned in China. It's, banned, it's a Chinese social media site. It's banned in China. But it proliferates here in Britain and America. Make of it what you will. But it looks like America are beginning to yeah. say, is beginning to well, say, well, if it's banned in China, we're going to ban it. Ban a lot of it, I right. say. Uh, messing up minds. We, we spent a lot of time knocking the police. I want to praise this policeman. Mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of uh, mad, you know, moronic American tourists were shouting insults and laughing at a guardsman uh, uh, standing duty, as mm. they do in central London down in Whitehall. And uh, let's have a look at what this police officer said to them. Just serve their country, all right? They take their job seriously. They are responsible for success in this facility. They are not an object of ridicule. I um, appreciate you having fun. He's not having fun. He's got a long day. There's a lot of hours he's got to do. It is tiring, exhausting. It takes the out of him, all right? We do not appreciate that. I will ask you to leave the facility, all right? Well done, well done I to that. Well done to that officer. Yeah, well, well done. done. Well done. And actually, do you know, it takes me back to thinking that horrible, those horrible scenes during the BLM protests where people <sighs> were like graffitiing the Winston Churchill yeah. statue. Okay. I'd have liked to see people go and defend that in the right, same Right, lineup lineups been announced. Dua Lipa, oh, Coldplay, Scissor, and Shania Twain. Uh, Shania. Gonna, uh, Shania. Shania. What? How do you say? Shania. Who cares? Uh, yeah, no that, they're gonna. Look, that's the lineup. Uh, there'll probably be more awards. Uh, there's people like Afrobeat star Burner Boy, uh, and so on and so forth. And if you want to go to Glastonbury, you, I must, don't. you must be insane. I went once. It was Did the you? worst four days of my life. I mean, if Never, I ever to, again. If I wanted to go somewhere full of like you know people who are largely off their faces on drugs and smell of urine, I would volunteer at an old people's home. Yeah, and you want to so... sit up to your chest in mud. Disgusting event. Right. Uh, sadly, though, that brings us to the end of another. A fantastic show, Alex. Thank you for tuning in. Do join us a bit later, 1 p.m. for our other show. Ghost Talk. Up next the cross is out. Julia Hartley Brewer. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, not a woman, trans woman. Isn't that? Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on what <laughs> just happened. <laughs> Ooh, <we're missing. laughs>